first time on Deadliest Warrior. These warriors were not born to the country that they were fighting for. Gurkhas versus the French Foreign Legion. The Gurkhas fight for the British Empire. They come from Nepal. They live in that Himalayan mountain environment. They're little guys, but they are ferocious. And the British brought them on board because they were such a nightmare for the British when they were fighting against them. When you're talking about the French Foreign Legion, they're comprised of all kinds of guys from all over the world. Thugs and misfits and some guys who probably would wind up in prison. And they have fought in the most desperate battles that France needs them to fight in. You know, Mac, I can't agree with you more with the Gurkhas. Training in an oxygen-deprived environment like the Himalayas becomes a huge benefit to them as a warrior. The French Foreign Legion are subjected to a horrendous training environment, the desert. The physicality and endurance aspect of this is just unbelievable. Both these guys are near superhuman. The thing that's actually pretty amazing about this matchup is both of these warriors literally changed the outcome of World War II. And I can't wait to see how it unfolds. The fearless mountain assassins who take on the British Empire's most dangerous mission versus the elite army of real-life expendables that France sends to do its dirty work. It's the ultimate battle of World War II's legendary hired guns. Gurkha or French Foreign Legion? Who is deadliest? To find out, the history of war and modern science collide as former Navy SEAL Richard Mac Makowitz dives deep into the tactics of the warriors behind the weapons. Biomedical engineer Jeff D. Malin applies 21st century technology to unlock new data on arsenals of the past. And ER physician Armand Dory dissects the trauma and reveals the physical and psychological traits that shaped these legends of war. This groundbreaking data will be paired with historical research and entered into an all-new digital combat engine. Two legendary combatants will be resurrected. History will be rewritten. But only one will be crowned. Deadliest warrior. Welcome to the Fight Club. Our experts prepare to uncover new historical insights to determine which World War II mercenary is deadliest. The Gurkhas, Britain's elite rifle unit hired from the mountains of Nepal. Or the French Foreign Legion, the international infantry of veterans and outlaws paid to fight for France. These guys are polar opposites when you look at them, but start with the tail of the tape. The French Foreign Legion, they're approximately 5'8", 155 pounds. The Gurkhas, they average 5'3", 135 pounds. While the Gurkha may look little on the outside, they're really big on the inside. When you live in a higher altitude, it increases the number of red blood cells. That's going to provide for superior performance. Let's compare that to the French Foreign Legion. They bring this genetic diversity of all different cultures mixed in with an intense training in the desert. From the severest cold to the extreme heat, it toughens their mental game. I truly believe this is an ultimate warrior matchup. Doc, I couldn't agree with you more. Let's just start with the French Foreign Legion. They are tough, they are hard, and they are willing to die rather than surrender. And then you talk about the Gurkha. They understand war deeply. The Gurkha is inheriting an identity that has been passed from grandfather to father to son. Nothing else matters than becoming a great warrior. Completely agreed, Mac. But you've got to give these men weapons. And we're going to cover the Gurkhas and the French Foreign Legion around the era of World War II. We've got light machine guns. But these warriors were both legendary knife fighters. So for close-range weapons, we're going to be testing the Gurkhas Kukri versus the Legionnaires Kamaloos. So not only are we going to be considering all this weapons data, we're going to look at historical data and all the nuances that we can get from our X-Factors. The all-new digital combat engine was created by Robert Daly, a former Green Beret and designer of more than 30 military simulation video games, including the deadliest warrior game. The new engine will combine weapons data with more than 100 X-Factors, critical intangibles that will be assigned values based on the warrior's battle records, tactics, and psychological profile. Discipline is one that matters a lot to me. The Gurkhas are born and raised with complete respect and discipline throughout their life. When you look at the Foreign Legion, it is coming through training. So it's a very subtle difference, but they both play a big factor on the battlefield. Wielding the Gurkha's weapons, 
Rastra Ra. <laughs> Former Gurkha soldier who served in the famed brigade for 20 years, where he saw action in Kosovo and Afghanistan. The Gurkhas are going to kill French legion because the Gurkhas fast, furious, and they fear no death. Also representing Team Gurkha is John Conlon, a former British Army officer who became a Gurkha historian after commanding a unit of the elite mercenaries in the jungles of Borneo. Well, you've got to go back almost 200 years. When the British were controlling the Empire of India, the British launched an invasion against the Gurkhas of Nepal, and it didn't turn out very well. Outmanned and outgunned almost two to one, only 12,000 Gurkhas forced a stalemate against 22,000 British troops. British officers were so impressed with the bravery of the tribesmen's Kukri charges, they signed a treaty allowing the Gurkhas to be recruited as mercenaries. The British realized that they had something special here. They went where the danger was greatest. Abyssinia, China, Burma. It's very important for a Gurkha to do well in his military service. It's in the blood. It's hardwired in the DNA. Defeat is not a word in their vocabulary. Handling the weaponry for the French Foreign Legion is Nick Hughes. A former legionnaire who fought for the French flag as an Australian. Anytime there's a conflict anywhere in the world that involves France, the French government sends the legion. And if we get wiped out and destroyed, the people in France don't give a damn because it's a bunch of foreigners. We know that we're going to get sent where no one else wants to get sent. That's what makes us unique. That's what makes us deadly. Also representing the legion is the director of the Military History Center at the University of North Texas, Jeffrey Waro. The French Foreign Legion was established in 1831. There had been a wave of revolutions all over Europe. They were put down everywhere. Faced with this mob of failed revolutionaries who needed some kind of occupation, the king decided, why don't I form them into a foreign legion? There were murderers, petty thieves. There were down and elect types. And what the legion offered was French citizenship and a new life and a new respectability in return for good service. The term of service was only five years, but the training was brutal at legion camps in the harsh deserts of North Africa. Failure was met with severe corporal punishment. More legion air recruits have died during training than any other military unit in the world. The average recruit had this criminal background. Sometimes the end of a rifle butt, a fist or a boot is the only thing they'll respond to. For nearly two centuries, France has shipped the legion overseas to its riskiest assignments, from Mexico to Indochina. They have this innate sense of superiority to other units because these are the guys that will take the jobs that nobody else will and make the ultimate sacrifice. I'm so glad that we're taking into consideration the historical data, all of these X factors, but to make the numbers and the simulation complete, we've got to get you weapons data. Both the Legion and the Gurkhas were formed in the 19th century, but became legends fighting for the Allies in World War II. The showdown from that era starts at long range, where both mercenary units first engage the enemy with their light machine guns. In the deserts of the North African campaign, the Legion laid down suppressive fire with their massive killer, the Browning Automatic Rifle, a legendary American firearm first used in World War I. It's just over four feet long. It has a 20-round box magazine. Unlike the Gurkha that needs a sling to use his weapon, I can fire this quite comfortably off the shoulder. And it has another interesting innovation. It's a buffer spring in the stock, so the gun will absorb the recoil instead of Nick's shoulder. Shall I tell one advantage and disadvantage between these guns? Yeah, this one's better than yours. We've already established that. Okay, guys, we're going to be assessing volume of fire, the ability of these weapons to get through degradable cover, accuracy, and your ability to move with these weapons. Simulate an advance on a series of three entrenched enemies. The expert will start firing in the prone position at a covered target 100 yards downrange. They will then advance to take out concealed targets at 50 and 25 yards, reloading as necessary. Jeff has filled each target with Tannerite, a binary material that explodes when a bullet impacts an instant kill zone, signaling the expert to advance to the next position. So it's just upper chest and head. Otherwise, it's a no-go. On three, two, one, on and on! Nice movement. Good recovery. Yeah! Nice! Nice! 58 seconds!
Vince! Let's go check out those cinder blocks. Three targets, three instant kills. What were you thinking here? Were you trying to clear out some of the cover so you could know yeah, that this I have, position Yeah, I have good? no way of knowing if there isn't a second man behind that wall, so I started to debride the target. Yeah, let's also consider it's not just about that bullet. It's also about shrapnel. Though low velocity, there's still projectiles that you have to manage as a human being. And really, it's nice to know you can get the penetration you need if there is a target behind there. There's a lot of guys overseas right now. Because they have the firepower, they can go right through that wall and hit that guy, and he'll never pop up again. And what I like is this ability to fire off the shoulder. Firing off the sling, as I think you're going to see with our buddies from the Gurkhas, that is not accurate from down here. That's prey and spray. Speaking of his shoulder, how did the dampening system actually work? It's great. There's no, there's almost no kick at all. All right, Rai, what do you think? Look at this weapon, right? I'm feeling I'm not having a gun here. But look at him. He's now struggling. No, I don't struggle. You might struggle because right. you're a little okay. guy and you've got a great big heavy right. weapon that's four pounds heavier than this. Look at the magazine. Uh, this thing weighs... Look okay. at the magazine. You, know yeah. you know what it sounds like, buddy? Uh, sounds, sounds like a test. Yeah. Sounds like a test. Next, can the Gurkha's light machine gun blow away the Legionnaire's VAR? And later, this former Gurkha and Legionnaire wield the bolt-action rifles and legendary blades to help turn the tide of World War II. Gurkha, French Foreign Legion, who is deadliest? And now, it's time for the Deadliest Warrior season finale, live. Hi there, I'm Kieran Elliott, and you are watching a very special live presentation of the Deadliest Warrior season finale. It is the biggest night in Deadliest Warrior history, with two legendary episodes. Right now, you are watching one of my favourite matchups of the entire season, Gurkhas versus French Foreign Legion, and that will be followed by the first fantasy matchup ever, Vampires versus Zombies. Dr Dorian, Mike, Jeff and I will be dropping in live throughout the night with updates and analysis, and you will become part Part of the show with real-time voting and we'll respond to your questions in the aftermath at 11pm. You can place your votes at dwlive.spike.com on your iPod, your iPhone, your Android device and you can see the results add up live on your telly. Uh, now, Mac and Jeff, uh, you, what can we see from the, uh, the Gurkhas FFL matchup? Well, as you saw, I mean, I'm all into the test, and you saw the 10 right there, and that was a real special thing for me because it's that binary co compound that will only explode when it's hit by a high-velocity round. I, I personally think, who isn't excited to see Gurkha versus French Foreign Legion? <laughs> That's the real question. I mean, these are fierce warriors, they're skilled warriors, and they epitomize the attitude of not dead, can't quit. They really do. And, uh, Doug, you're kind of staking your reputation a little bit with vampires versus zombies. Uh, how do you feel about this matchup? Yeah, Ken, you're like this, uh, you know, you can take away my medical license, but you can't take away my medical freedom. Freedom! <laughs> well, thank you very much, guys. It's great to have you here, and we've got these two fantastic shows back to back. Thank you very much for joining us as well. Keep your votes coming in, dwlive.spike.com. Now, stick around because we have two very special guests coming in and joining us later on tonight as well. But right here on Spike is Deadliest Warrior Live French Foreign Legion versus the Gurkhas. Don't go anywhere. The Browning Automatic Rifle is an automatic rifle. The word tells you it's a rifle. The Bren is a light machine gun. It puts down a heavier round, more sustained fire. I have never seen a Gurkha who did not love this weapon. Gurkhas, the Himalayan soldiers hired from Nepal, who have loyally fought for England from 19th century India to modern day Iraq, versus the French Foreign Legion. International mercenaries who gained notoriety in 1863 at the Battle of Cameron. Only five surviving members of a Legion unit were surrounded by 5,000 Mexican troops. Instead of surrender, they charged, forever establishing their fight to the death reputation. The Battle of Cameron symbolizes what the Legion is all about, fighting to the last man if need be, and never even having a thought of surrender. We've seen the ravaging force of the Legion's World War II firearm, the Browning Automatic Rifle. But the Gurkhas delivered death in the jungles of World War II's Pacific Theater with their own light machine gun. The Bren, designed in Czechoslovakia and used in combat for half a century. It can fire a 30 round in a one magazine. You have a handle, so it can fire from the standing position. It was heavy to carry. Why could they do it? Because they came from Nepal, 
They spent all those years climbing up and down, building those leg muscles. You've forgotten. He's got more red blood cells, so he can carry, like, a heavier gun, extra barrels, extra banana magazines, the whole thing Buddy, because of the... Stick to history. <laughs> I don't understand medicine. <laughs> to test the brain's accuracy, firepower, and maneuverability in a simulated assault on entrenched enemy positions, Rai will move from cover to cover, firing at three Tannerite-filled targets. We'll try to beat Nick's time at 58 seconds. On three, two, one, Ayoka Kelly! This far. Clearing the jam costs Rai precious seconds. Fast. Yeah, he's much faster. Oh. Oh. Now we're talking. Nice magazine change. Yeah, he's nice. on the move. <laughs> move, move, move. Good job. Oh. Oh. Great job, Roy. Despite the costly jab, Rai's bread matches the VAR's three instant kills. Yet another fantastic head explosion, okay? But we wanted to see if that weapon could take down this degradable cover. It did exactly that. If there's a man in here, you've now killed him. Right? You've proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that in the hands of a very capable operator, the brand can have effective fire and accurate fire all on the targets. Although it is the old machine gun that used in World War II, still I, I use this while I was in a Gokas. And still, if I have to choose, I'll choose this brand machine gun. What we had is Rai running significantly faster than Nick was able to do. You know, John, the Gurkhas are physically the smaller, lighter warrior, but they do have that advantage with regards to their leg muscles and with regards to their ability to actually train in higher altitudes. That has to factor in as an X factor of physicality, which we will plug into the sim. Rai did a phenomenal job, but when I look at the brand itself, I can see there are inherent operational functionality issues that could cause that weapon system to go offline. With the test times of both weapons so close, what aspects of each light machine gun's functionality will earn it the edge? Let's have a look at Rai and the Bren gun now. Okay, the first thing I know is take a look at the sight. The sight itself is wobbling back and forth. The magazine is wobbling. But when I look at the BAR, this doesn't look like it's going to actually weigh down on him, causing any significant endurance issues. The thing I'm, I'm not a big fan of, when I start to look at the brand and I get behind it, okay? Now I've got to actually magazine. change my cheek well to find this sight. When you're starting to look at the BAR, there's nothing like being able to put this light machine gun on your shoulder. I can volley with this thing very clearly. I can step into this thing and keep control with it. And that's what we do with M60s. The long-range weapons, Edge, French Foreign Legion. The battle continues. The Gurkhas and the Legion's medium-range weapon, the Bolt Action Rifle. The FFL's assault units would open fire with their compact French firearm. The Mass 36. The last Bolt Action Rifle put into service by a major world power. It's got a five-round magazine, and the round they used was the 75454, which is this one here, very fast, very accurate. It's a shorter gun, and that short barrel helps you get in and out of cover, move swiftly. This was very helpful fighting off the uh, enemy infantry. The Gurkhas shoot back with the fastest military bolt-action rifle of its day. The Enfield number 4. England's mass-produced rifle developed to fight the Nazis. It has the 10 round magazine and it has a long barrel which gives the accuracy on a target. Each expert will fire his rifle through a chronometer into a block of ballistics gel, revealing his weapon's muzzle velocity and damage capability against simulated human tissue. Send one round through the volume of the crony into the gel block. Got it. Oh! 2,647 feet per second. That is a fast round. How will the Enfield number four compare? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> 2,417 feet per second. Nice. And look at that temporary cavity. Love it. The temporary cavity is the expansion, which is temporary. It's just like pushing tissue, and then the tissue comes back. In that process, things can tear, bad things can happen. 
the MASH-36 has fast around and blasts a bigger temporary cavity, revealing it transferred more energy to the target. This means the weapon with the largest stopping power is the MASH-36. Another win for the French Foreign Legion. You know, Jeff, it's not a matter of one sort. It's a matter of the performance on the battlefield. All right, we'll see. Coming up, with the Legion's light machine gun taking the edge, and the Gurkha's bolt-action rifle even the score. Two mercenary battalions who turn the tide of World War II. Gurkhas, French Foreign Legion, who will be the deadliest warrior. Hey guys, we are back live. I tell you what, those light machine gun tests are absolutely amazing. Love to see that. Okay, let's kick off our first live vote of the night. Based on what you've seen so far, who do you think is winning? Go to dwlive.spike.com and vote right now. Uh, the results are just coming in and looking at that, it does look like French Foreign Legion are slightly ahead. It's very, very neck and neck. 50-50 actually, to be quite honest. But FFL slightly further ahead. Jeff, would you say that the audience are on the mark there? Is it that well... A split? You know, it's funny because I love this matchup and uh, the kukri and the whole legend behind the Gurkhas, I love them. But you take natural born killers with instinctive discipline against natural born killers without that instinctive discipline, yeah, I'm yeah. going to side with the guy that has the instinctive discipline. And that's the Gurkhas in my mind. Absolutely. Let's have uh, one last look at the votes Thanks. on your screen. Fans are still fit or it's still neck and egg. Stay tuned. We will check back and see if your votes change based on what happens next. Enjoy. French Foreign Legion, the hired guns whose brutal desert training prepared them to serve France in desert campaigns from World War II Libya to Gulf War Iraq. Versus the Gurkhas, England's Asian warriors whose brutal night fighting skills played a crucial role at the Battle of Kohima Impal in the Burma campaign of World War II. They broke the will of the Japanese Imperial Army at that battle. The Gurkhas did extremely well. Testing the ballistics of their World War II rifles, Jeff found that the Legion's Mass 36 inflicted more damage than the Gurkhas Enfield No. 4. But which medium range firearm is deadlier in the heat of battle? So here's the scenario you're on patrol and you make contact with the enemy. To assess each rifle's accuracy, battlefield maneuverability, and reload time, the experts will fire 10 rounds at three moving targets 50 yards out. The average range of World War II firefights. The experts will low crawl to a second concealed position, firing 10 more rounds at two static targets, 35 yards downrange. So, Rye, you'll be up first with the Enfield number four. Let's do it. On three, two, one, contact front. Take your time, brother. Nice. Wow. Excellent. That looks like a miss. There you go. Oh, yeah. Chest hit. Wow. Excellent. Okay, he's reloading. Reloads. The Enfield is designed to handle two five-round stripper clips. Nice and smooth. It's tough in that mesh, too. You gotta keep the barrel up. No, you have to crawl through vegetation all the time. You still gotta find a way to get through it. Got there pretty quickly. Here we go, second firing position. Nice shot. There we go. Nice. Missed it. Nice. Nice shot. Excellent. Yeah. Headshot. Yeah. Excellent. Done. Two minutes and seven seconds to get through that course. Nice work, Ry. Ry and his Enfield number four scored instant kills on all five targets. Take a look at this. I mean, this is like a tracheostomy. This would actually spurt out his last breath. With a fine mist of blood, this guy's having a bad day. <laughs> We've got an 80% hit ratio on the static targets and a 50% hit ratio for the moving targets. All in a total time of two minutes and seven seconds. Gentlemen, when you look at Rye, you're actually looking at 200 years of military tradition. His father fought in Burma. He has wanted to be a soldier since he was five years old. They want to obey. They want to be disciplined. One of the most important distinctions you have to be a great warrior is discipline, and discipline is one of the X factors we plug into our sim. Nick is up next with a mass 36. On three, two, one, contact front! Nice! Got a whole lot of blood there. That's a hit. Yeah, it's dead center. 
Nice. There we go. Dude, he's nailing it. Yeah! Nick reloads the Mass 36's five-round magazine, one bullet at a time. It's costing Come on. some time. Yeah, it looks like a miss. There you go. That is a hit. Oh, dead center. Nice. Oh, ho, ho, ho. nice. Nice. Reloading again. Smooth reload. Nice, good low crawl. The bigger yeah, guy, though. He's a bigger guy. Nice and low for a big guy, yeah. Dude, he is 6'9", right? Oh, he missed it. He missed that, too. Missed it. Nice. That was a hit. That's clean. There you go. Bring it home. Bring it home. I'm telling you, though, the reload is killing him. Yes. Missed it. There you go. Nice shot. Excellent. And again. And nice. Again. Done. Excellent. Done. <laughs> nice work. Nick matches Rye's five instant kills. The Mass 36's slower reload costs him significant time compared to the Gurkha's Enfield number four. One of the fastest reflexes you have is the corneal reflex, which makes you instantly blink. But this poor fella didn't even have a chance to blink insta-kill. We're seeing a hit ratio of 80% on the moving targets with, respectively, a 60% hit ratio on the static targets. You did a great job with your moving targets, but things looked a little bit different when you got to your static targets. When I was in the Legion, we learned real targets are moving targets and the possible second answer on this and we'll never know is that i threw two shots into every one of those holes you guys just can't see it <laughs> let's think about reality if you're in a war doesn't matter how many rounds you put in you got to be fast you got to be quick in the real war i kill more people than you do we'll see there's some more coming up <laughs> legion's mass 36 has the advantage in damage and accuracy the gurkhas lead in maneuverability and reload time with their enfield number four which rifle's finer points give it the edge? On Rye's side, two minutes and seven seconds. With Nick, two minutes, 54 seconds. That, to me, is a significant increase in time. Yeah, you know, for me, I felt like Nick was more accurate on the dynamic shooting environment. We saw it in the trauma. We saw it in the accuracy. I give a slight edge to the Moss 36. But I want to show you something that stands out for me right off the bat with the Mass 36. When you're looking at ha holding a sight picture, Okay. If I have to change, because I've got this hitting me in the face, now I have to change my sight picture, clear my head, and bring this weapon back up. But when we come to the end field number four, I come back, you can actually see I don't have to change my sight picture, which inherently will make you faster operating with this weapon. Plus, having a 10-round magazine to start, I give a slight edge to the end field number four. In a close contest, the edge for medium-range weapons goes to the Gurkhas. The all-new digital combat engine incorporates the key X-factor of battlefield tactics. Mac will analyze each warrior's most effective World War II battle plans. Both the Gurkhas and the French Foreign Legion use small unit tactics to develop their incredible reputations as legendary warriors. How would you describe the Gurkhas' approach to warfare? Their whole vision is improvisation on the ground, acting quickly. Could you give me an example of that? 1944, Burma, 30 Gurkhas taking on 80 Japanese infantry and virtually wiping them out. All right, let's go there right now using the touch table. Here we go. Set up the battlefield for me. We have a Japanese car moving along a jungle trail. They are identified by a scout. Very simply, you've got a Japanese patrol moving down through the trails, right? A Gurkha scouting party heads back up and he notifies his lieutenant where the patrol is going. Gurkha lieutenant knows that he is outnumbered three to one. His job is to destroy this column without gunfire. You've got your Gurkha lieutenant. He takes the vast majority of his troops and he heads here and he's setting up something right here. But he actually sneaks a group of guys over here to set up the Japanese. He has to remain totally silent, hidden in the undergrowth. The Gurkhas jump up from the undergrowth with their kukris clashing, taking one, two, and three men at the same time. It's a real horror show, and the Japanese infantryman does not know what is happening. They never even got a shot off. The Japanese line now is actually moving back into itself, causing it to bunch up right here. It's almost like being stuck in a choke point. They can't flank this position because of the terrain, so they'd go back down the path they just came, right into a linear ambush that's already been set up. Every single Japanese that enters into this kill zone winds up being massacred. Effectively, this Gurkha unit of 30 men wiped out 80 Japanese infantry 
by thinking outside the box in an improvised ambush. Coming up, with the Legion having the edge in machine guns and the Gurkhas taking the rifle test, the clash of mercenaries moves into close quarters for a shocking finish. Gurkhas or French Foreign Legion? Who will be the deadliest warrior? Gurkhas, the fearless Nepalese warriors who brutally wage war for England with the motto, better to die than be a coward. Versus the French Foreign Legion, a core of real-life expendables who fought desperately at Bir Hakim in 1942 to stop Hitler's advance on the North African oil fields. It's a perfect engagement for Mac to assess the X factor of battlefield tactics. The French Foreign Legion was placed at the bottom of this French-British line extending down from the coast in Libya down to this old Ottoman fort called Bir Hakim to try to stop the German-Italian advance toward the Suez Canal. If these French Foreign Legionnaires don't hold the line, the war could be over in 42. Set up the battlefield. These encircling bands are the attacking German and Italian divisions. You have 10 to 1 ratio in troop numbers between the Germans 10 and the French 1. Wow. Rommel thinks it'll be over in a single day. But what happens? He meets unexpectedly ferocious resistance from the French Foreign Legion. Every time the Germans come up close, they get blown back by anti-tank gun fire, by rifle fire. I mean, this was a bloody fight. And there was nothing about the Battle of Bir Hakim that was a passive defense. This was an active defense. The Legionnaires are the ones who conduct these daring raids at night. It's an active defense when they hit these key roads that the Germans and Italians used to supply themselves. So they slow down the resupply of the besieging divisions. But the counterattack raids of the active defense tactic forced the Nazis to change their formation to protect supply lines. Rommel wants to contain them, make sure they don't break out, and they bought themselves two weeks, and those two weeks were critical moments. By the second week of the Battle of Bir Hakim, the French are basically down to nothing. There's only one option. You either fight or you die. French Foreign Legion said, we're going to break out so that we can fight another day. So they detected areas where there were gaps or little hinges they could slip through. So what they decide is, we're going to cut all the way through here at night and escape this position. Winston Churchill later said the survival of the Allies owed to the resistance of the French Foreign Legion at Bir Hakim. The Gurkhas clearly used their improvised ambushes to help the Allies defeat Japan during World War II. But what the French Foreign Legion did at Bir Hakim with their active defense against Rommel, holding him in place long enough for the Allies to change the course of World War II was incredible. For the battlefield tactics that prevented Nazi world domination, Edge, French Foreign Legion. When World War II combat got up close, these soldiers fell back on their battle blades. The Gurkhas butchered the enemy with their centuries-old knife, the Kukri. An everyday farming tool turned standard issue military weapon. The Gurkhas World War II wearer Kukri is handcrafted for the first time in over 50 years by weapons designer and builder Dave Baker, just below the fight club in the deadliest warrior armory. We did extensive research into some museum pieces and found that the Kukri of World War II was about a ten and a half inch blade with a five inch handle. When making this, we start by hammering this head out into a leaf shape, creating the forward bend. And what that gives us is a weighted head which creates a really good cutting action. Just one inch above the edge of Kukuri, there is a little notch. It stops the blood coming through in the hand. In a battle, when you start chopping people's head off, if the blood gets your hand, obviously you will lose Kukuri. In a test to measure these blades' penetration damage and overall effectiveness, the experts will attack a World War II foxhole. Two guards, represented by bovine torso, mimic human flesh and bone. During the struggle, the man sleeping in behind wakes up, and that's where we're going to assess the accuracy of your reactive final blow. Doesn't hit back, Nick. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> nice, kid. To measure each blade's impact velocity, Jeff attaches a three-dimensional orientation sensor. Beautiful. This is perfect. On three, two, one, cut him up! Good work. Okay, so let's take a look at the damage. All three targets were instant kills. Take a look down at the slash through literally the jaw of this guy. If this wood wasn't here, he would be actually doing that decapitation like you said you would with this weapon. 
The impact velocity was 59 miles per hour. Nice work, Rye. When you're up close and personal in combat, you got to be effective. That's most important. As far as the X factor of killer instinct, I think you've demonstrated that beyond a shadow of a doubt. To be completely honest, Mac, I was unimpressed. His tactics, uh, honestly, I thought sucked. I'm sorry, but throwing head kicks in battle makes as much sense as punching somebody in the foot. When he does that first slash, he turns his back on this guy, and we're taught never take your eyes off your opponent. What about if there's nine opponents on your side? Who are you going to watch? There weren't nine, there were three. And, and obviously, if you can kick someone's head without any difficulties, big time knockout, it's up done. Taking on the Kukri is the Legion's vicious blade, Kamalus version of the famed K-Bar knife issued to the U.S. Marines in World War II. Millions of these things were made. Americans carried them into the European theater and thus they found their way into Legion hands. Remember, they're the world's premier light infantry. They don't get a lot of heavy artillery or any armor, so they're very reliant on what they have. So knives are very important to them. But how were the Kamaloos compared to the Kukri? On three, two, one, cut them up! <laughs> Done! Three targets, three instant kills. The impact velocity is 81 miles per hour. Nice job, Nick. This looks like classic definition of a lover scorned injury, but on a serious level, you can get stabbed over 20 times and survive. It's the location you place him in, and you definitely demonstrated that here. I left him in that brutalized state on purpose because I want to move on and have his mates come in and look at that. One trick is you kill every second guy, so when they wake up in the morning, every second guy is down. That messes with their head. They don't want to mess with you. You know, you bring up the psychological warfare, and that definitely is an X factor we can plug into the sim. Amalu struck faster. But the Kukri's blade cut deeper, so which close-range weapon gives his warrior the edge? We did see the speed of the Camelus over the Kukri. 81 miles per hour versus 59 miles per hour. But when you're talking about delivering, executing on the battlefield, you want your weapon system to be able to do 80% of the work. It is obvious which weapon will do more work for you just by looking at them. I agree with everything you guys just said. The design of this, you can slash and get an instant kill, and you can thrust and get an instant kill. I'm not convinced that the Kamaloos is going to kill every time. You've got to place it perfectly. The close-range weapons, the edge, goes to the Gurkhas for the Kukri. Coming up, the final battle. The Gurkhas, quick-strike hitmen, whose rugged mountain upbringing gives them unstoppable endurance. Versus the French Foreign Legion. The outlaws whose brutal desert training transforms them into killing machines. Who will be the deadliest warrior? Wow. Those were brutal knife tests. Nick went absolutely crazy with the Camelus, but the Kukri is still a great knife as well. Let's take another look at the live voting. Uh, we've reset the poll just in case you've changed your mind. And it looks like... Um, uh, looks like Gurkhas are actually ahead. French Foreign Legion not being favoured as much. I'm totally going for the Gurkhas. Uh, Dr. Dorian, do you have any final thoughts before we run that simulation? You know, it's interesting here. With this technology, we're seeing what the viewers think, and it's the same way that I felt while we shot the episode and kind of how I feel right now. I can't wait to see the final battle. No, absolutely. I think we all are. We're look, really looking forward to that. All right, the viewers are going for... Uh, still looks like the Gurkhas. Yeah, Gurkhas are still ahead. And after the break, we will run the sim and see if you have got... The that voting right. Vampires versus Zombies is coming up next and we will be joined by a very special guest so stay tuned and keep those votes coming in dwlive.spike.com Yet another important X factor for me is psychological warfare. We almost had a dead even heap with this and we rated the Gurkhas in 85 87 but in reality that's a wash. Gurkha versus French Foreign Legionnaire. Who is deadliest? Our team of specialists has tested, recorded, and analyzed weapons these two great warriors brought to this World War II showdown. In long-range weapons, the Browning automatic rifle gunned down the bread light machine gun. Edge Legionnaire. 
the medium range weapons, the Enfield number no. 4 bolt action rifle outshot the Mass 36. Edge Gurkha. In short range weapons, the Gurkha's Kukri had more killing potential than the Kamaloos. Edge Gurkha. The battlefield tactics, the French Foreign Legion's active defense, defeated the Gurkha's improvised ambush. Edge Legionnaire. All the weapons data has been turned over to Robert Daly and plugged into the digital combat engine. His engineers have completed their historical research and assigned values to more than 100 X-Factors. Our team of researchers look at all of those things that make up the warrior behind the weapons. Their battles, their fighting styles, their techniques. We quantify that data with a numerical value between 1 and 100, with 100 being the ultimate warrior. The Gurkhas born to fight, whereas the Legionnaires, if they screw up, they get brutally punished. That is, to me, all about discipline and the training that it takes to instill that discipline. Exactly correct. When you look at discipline, the edge goes to the Gurkhas, and we rated an 88 to the French Foreign Legion 76. Training, on the other hand, the training in the Legion is insane. So training was a 90 for the Legion and an 87 for the Gurkhas. For me, physicality is so important in this matchup. For the first time, we actually have a warrior whose environment becomes a physiological advantage. And that's got to be a big factor here. When you look at the Gurkhas, because they're in a higher altitude, they are able to recover faster or to sustain themselves longer. And we had to rate the Gurkhas higher on this. And we gave them a 91. And we gave the French Foreign Legion an 84. OK, we've entered in all of our X factors. Let's run the sim. The digital combat engine will run 5,000 battles between five Gurkhas and five Legionnaires. It was a really close match. 
The Gurkhas did end up winning, winning 2,619 versus 2,381. In the head-to-head -head weapons comparison, the French Foreign Legion's Browning automatic rifle destroyed the Brenka. But the Gurkhas Enfield No. 4 outperformed the Mass 36, and their Kukri decapitated the Kamaloos. Historically, the Bren light machine gun had significant malfunctions in the field. And this is really what played out in the results. But the final outcome came down to where they train. And the French Foreign Legion trained in a very harsh desert, but it is not the same as the high altitude training that the Gurkhas went through. And that physicality difference really showed up in our fatigue rates of these troops. The Gurkhas were only exhausted 5.02% of the time, whereas the French Foreign Legion were exhausted 10.9% of the time. And that's a really important thing. The Gurkhas live to be warriors on the battlefield. It is a generational thing. The knowledge keeps getting passed down from father to son. They live to show up on a battlefield. And when they turn it on, watch the hell out. And there you go. The Gurkhas win it. What a phenomenal matchup. Stick around because up next it is the long-awaited Vampires vs. Zombies and Vampire expert Steve Niles will be joining us live. So stick around.